So the official name of this project is SCOPE-M, which is this complicated acronym that stands for Safe and Continuous Power Beaming Microwave. But what we're actually doing in the project can be stated in much simpler terms. We've been tasked by the Pentagon to deliver one kilowatt of electrical power at a distance of a kilometer using a microwave beam. The point of Scope N was to demonstrate a wireless power beaming link at the microwave frequencies. So the component is, um, the components are we need a transmitter and we need a receiver to rectify the power. So the transmitter, we used a 100 kilowatt um, high power uh, amplifier to amplify uh, power, uh, RF power going to a dish, which then focuses up the power toward our rectenna array. The rectenna array we designed in-house to receive the RF power and convert that power to DC power. The rectenna is an array of tens of thousands of X-band antennas. Each of these antennas is connected to a small rectifier diode. That diode converts the incident microwave power into DC electrical power. Our experiments use a microwave source driving a dish antenna. Now our dish antenna has this variable focus zoom feature to it that lets us focus the power at specific standoff distances from the transmit site. And then at the receive site, we have a rectenna array and the rectenna array converts the microwave beam to DC electrical power. Scope M has been tested at two sites. One is in Blossom Point, Maryland, and the other is at MIT's Hoosier facility in Massachusetts. And we did testing at two sites for a few reasons. At Blossom Point, we were able to deliver a very large amount of power, 1.6 kilowatts, exceeding the target we had for power delivery by 60%. And at the site that we did at in Massachusetts, we didn't have quite the same power level, but the average power received was much higher, which meant that we actually sent more energy with the demo we did in Massachusetts than in the one in Maryland. As you'll see in the footage, we could use that received energy to power up a big bank of bright LEDs for the Massachusetts demonstration because the power beaming link at Blossom Point, Maryland, while being higher power, was on for a shorter period of time. It had a lower duty cycle. The total amount of energy transferred was smaller. Power beaming is the efficient point-to-point -point transfer of electrical power across free space using a directive electromagnetic beam. The link for Scope M was just over a kilometer, and the total amount of power was 1.6 kilowatts. We had been targeting a kilometer and a kilowatt, so we exceeded both of those goals easily. And the reason for setting those targets is to push this technology farther than has been demonstrated before. This is the most significant microwave power beaming demonstration that has occurred in nearly 50 years. And by setting these targets, we have exceeded all but one demonstration, one that was done way back in 1975 with a huge dish back in California at the NASA Goldstone facility and with a very large receiver, both a much larger transmitter and a much larger receiver than we used here. So we've been able to approach that watermark with much smaller transmitter, much smaller receiver, and a wavelength that makes a lot more sense for doing some of these microwave power beaming links. In microwave power beaming, you want to use as high a frequency as possible to keep the beam tight. But you don't want to use too high a frequency or you can start losing power to the atmosphere. It turns out 10 gigahertz is a great choice. At 10 gigahertz, the component technology out there is cheap and mature. And even in things like heavy rainfall, the loss of power is less than 5%. The benefit of using microwave power versus other frequencies, let's say millimeter wave or optical, um, one big one is if you want to wirelessly power from space to Earth, you get a lot less absorption in the atmosphere from microwaves compared to optical waves or millimeter waves. And so for that use case of space to earth power beaming, microwave is, has a huge benefit. We learned that we can exploit scattering from terrain in the path of the beam in order to increase power density at the target location. This should be really useful in future terrestrial applications for microwave power beaming. This demonstration paves the way for power beaming on earth, in space, and power beaming from space to the earth. Power beaming is the ultimate green technology. Unlike other sources of clean energy that we have here on the Earth, like photovoltaic cells and windmills, which provide intermittent and sporadic electrical power,
power being from space to the earth can provide power continuously 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. And that's something that no other form of clean energy can do today. Microwave power beaming is definitely safe. There are limits that have been set by international standards bodies for what a safe power density is. And as engineers, we develop systems that will not exceed those safety limits. And that means that it is safe for birds, it's safe for animals, and for people. In cases like we've done in the past with laser power beaming, where the power density might be higher, we can successfully implement interlock systems so that if something starts approaching the beam, the beam can shut off. We did not have to do that in this case because the power density was sufficiently low that it was intrinsically safe. From the standpoint of technology readiness level, I feel that we're very close to demonstrating a system that we could truly deploy and use in DoD applications.